Okay, yes. Um, I'm, I'm from the Thai military, but I'm not representing the military, just myself. I actually like your point about go back to a simple level. And so my question is, um, how can you make the Rohingya people being accepted or respected? Um, if I go to a farm and I, have, um, I need a place to stay, I may offer myself, I can cut the grass or I, I grow your rice, please feed me tonight. Something like that. But there's an there's element of give, give, giving each other and cooperating each other. So what I'm saying is that um, if it's going to be sustainable, can the Rohingya people and the local people cooperate in some way to create value? If, if I go to your house, I knock the door, please feed me, take care of me, and, and how long will it last? I mean, but if I, if I go to your house and I said, I can clean, I wash your car, I take care of your baby, tomorrow, whatever. Well, I'm, just, I'm just thinking out loud, but it's cooperation. And together, raise up the, the standard of living and harmony, and you can trust each other. Oh, he's good. I can trust each other. Actually, in my, in my soil, there's a um, homeless man, but he, he actually knocked at every door and said, please, can I cut your tree for you? Or I can take your garbage. And the soil, they kind of accept him eventually. Some rich house said, okay, you can stay here. Something like that. No? But I'm, I'm not comparing to this exactly to Rohingya, but cooperation may lead to acceptance. That's it. Um, thank you very much. I think that is one of the, of the simple ways um, to uh, address the issue um, in a uh, respectful way. Um, and actually, I think one of the recommendations that uh, Jan Vitit um, um, uh, put forward earlier was about involvement of communities, as far as I recall. So that is one of the way to involve communities. Yeah. Yeah. ที่อยู่บนผมที่อยู่ก็มีชาวนิยายขายโรตีชาวนิยายที่เข้าไปรับจ้างแรงงานในทางสมุทรสงครามก็ไปอยู่ในบริษัทที่เกี่ยวกับ